Now, before we get right into it, there are many massive spoilers within this video. So in order to give you some sort of bail time, I'll be blurring the screen for the first few seconds for each number, and also giving the title a hopefully non-spoilery name. Are you ready? Because there's a spoiler right here, right now. So if you haven't played Chrono Trigger, bail. about plot twists, some of them can be tactfully done shocks in the story, while others are just straight up bad and make little sense until you do some additional research. Even then, it still doesn't fit together nicely. I've narrowed down the list to include only JRPGs, so if you don't see, say, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, that's why. Again, I try and keep it to one per franchise, so we don't flood it with a specific game series. I've also divided up the list this time with the top five bad and good plot twists, working my way through the bottom numbers to the top, where we'll see the best and the worst plot twists in JRPGs. All right, let's get going. Number five bad, Emperor Griffin, Dark Cloud 2. You've come this far. Excellent, just like myself. No wonder the Atla Media chose you. Throughout Dark Cloud 2, we are haunted by this name, Emperor Griffin, a powerful being that has taken the shape of a griffin that has glowing red eyes, red fangs, or so they say. But then, when we finally earn the chance to meet this built-up antagonist, we are greeted by a small hooded figure with uh, the least threatening voice in the world. If any of you ever watched Rugrats while growing up, it's the voice of the twins Phil and Lil. I was left utterly disappointed by this pathetic bunny creature, and while well, yes, he does transform into something more befitting of the name Emperor Griffin, why couldn't they have just done that to begin with, and reveal his true form later on? I guess developers wanted to get a surprise out of their players, but too bad it was executed poorly. <laughs> Number 5 Good, Original Cardia, Cardia the Word of Fate. strategy game that uses Cartia, basically this world's magic system, that has the ability to summon whatever is written on the Cartia card, for example, water or fire. These cards also summon phantoms to help fight alongside our characters in battle. Throughout the game, you use the cards to make more powerful phantoms, create weapons and armor, they're integral to the game's mechanics, and the general world. In the final chapter on Lacrima's side, she uses one of the original Cardia, the Nothingness card, to prevent the world's destruction. In doing so, the party believe that Lacrima will die, as she fades away and says her goodbyes and then disappears. She then reappears in another world, Eden, where she meets a few other characters who also use originals to explain just what the heck is going on. It turns out that the cards are just transportation tools, in that they take elements and supplies from Eden and transport them to their world, Rebus. Original Cardia cards work in the opposite, taking something from Rebus, aka Lacrima, and transporting her to Eden. Unfortunately, Eden is now suffering tremendously because of the widespread use of Cartia, with the characters vowing to rebalance the two worlds. It was definitely a plot twist that I did not see coming at all. Number 4 Bad, Body Switching, Chrono Cross One of the entries that needed some heavy research afterwards. When you first play through the game, you're not exactly expecting to switch bodies with the main villain because, well, 
it's not at all clear why he would want to do it in the first place. Up until that point, Serge, the main character, doesn't really have a clue as to what's going on. He's trying to figure out why there's an alternate dimension where he's dead. Nothing is clear until you get further into the game, and even then, it's a jumbled mess if you're trying to pick apart every detail. Which, in my mind, is something games shouldn't expect the players to do, just so that they can understand the general plot. The point of Lynx, our main baddie, taking over Serge's body was that Serge had control over the frozen flame at Chronopolis, a highly advanced building that experimented with time. He was known as the Arbiter, the only one who could access the frozen flame, and thus locking everyone else out from accessing it. Something the supercomputer Fate was not happy about. This all happened when their boat was blown off course and they found Chronopolis by accident. When Serge was healed by the flame, he became the Arbiter. Fate then corrupted Serge's father, Wazuki, who attempted to drown Serge to release the lock, who was stopped by Kid, who then split the timeline. It's a goddamn mess to put together. In the end, stealing Serge's body was the easiest way to waltz over to the frozen flame and unlock it. I only fully understood this after making the game analysis of the Chrono series. Your average curious gamer would not go to all of this on their own, and thus it is a bad plot twist. Number 4 Good, Reset, Persona 2 Innocent Sin. of Innocent Sin, Nazis rock up with Hitler, having been revived by rampant rumors spreading into the human world, which if circulated enough, starts to become true in the city of Sumaru. This is all an elaborate plan coordinated by Naharlathep, the main antagonist. He was focused on the destruction of humanity and did so by creating a kind of prophecy later called In Lakech. In reality, the events in the prophecy were bogus and nonsensical, but were being transformed into reality by Naharlathep and his servants in order to rig his bet with Philemon, showing that humanity would ultimately ultimately destroy itself. You heard that right. He was doing all of this so he could win a bet. It's nuts. In the last part of the prophecy, once the star comes to a complete halt, the Maya Maiden's heart stops with it. What then remains is paradise on Earth, marking the end of a new beginning. Character Maya Amano is the unfortunate sacrifice mentioned in the prophecy and is fatally stabbed, fulfilling his goal, causing the Grand Cross to occur, which halts the Earth's rotation and subsequently leads to the destruction from the violent inertia on all of the surface of the planet. This is where it gets interesting. Philemon offers the party a chance to negate their current timeline, making it so that none of them ever meet one another. They all agree to forget each other, eh, all except the main character, Tatsuya Suo. His decision to not forget creates the plot of Eternal Punishment, a completely separate game to this one, which deals with an alternate reality where the prophecy doesn't exist, but the doomed timeline still clings on to destroy humanity. It's one thing to have a shock ending, it's another to make an entire game to play out that decision. <laughs> Number 3 Bad, The Ceiling, Saga Frontier uncertainty about Blue or Rouge's story ending. However, whether it was due to time constraints or them grasping for a twist ending, it really didn't sit right with a number of players. The story goes that the Magic Kingdom sealed away demons but had a feeling the seal would eventually break. Blue and Rouge are two twin brothers, and for some reason the custom of the kingdom is for the twins to eventually confront one another in a magic duel, with the victor absorbing the power of the loser. The plan all along was for the brothers to learn as much magic as possible so that when one absorbed the other, they would know all the magic in the land and be able to confront the Hell Lord and defeat him. If you didn't think this was already messed up, how about this? The wizards in the Magic Kingdom didn't really know if Blue or Rouge could pull off the stunt, and they didn't want to take any chances. During the final battle between Blue or Rouge and the Hell's Lord, the wizards sealed away Hell and froze it in time, which is what you see here. The game just stops, fades to a grayscale, and that's the end. Rumors have been picked up here and there, stating that Blue or Rouge does break free after hearing his friends crying out for him, but I don't buy it, as it's not just him stuck in there. What about the party members during the fight? It was a confusing twist that felt unbelievably flat with players, including myself, which led me to believe I had somehow fucked up my game disc or something. Number 3 Good, The Final Fight, Lufia 2, Rise of the Sinistrals. I don't 
don't like bringing up deaths in games, as they're usually a quick and easy moment of shock for the player to experience. It seems unfair, but I just can't help myself from thinking about the shocking twist right at the end of Lufia 2, where Maxim, your main guy, and his wife, Selen, whom you meet during your journey, marry, have a kid together. It's just that much more heart-wrenching that after the final fight with the Sinistrals, Selen was fatally wounded and dies. Not only that, the floating fortress you're on needs to be stopped, as it's headed straight to the town where your son is currently being taken care of. So you have no time to grieve, and you have to rush around destroying crystals before... Well, Maxim uses up the last of his life to break the last crystal, and also dies. It really was a, no, you can't do this to me, moment. You witness those two characters build their relationship up, make a family. It's like, no, just no. Number two bad, Guardian Forces, Final Fantasy VIII. can't summon beasts just be flashy and cool. You don't need to change them into anything more than that. And yet Final Fantasy VIII just had to be different, just had to do something with them. Even if it made no goddamn sense and played no other part than giving the players a confusing twist that didn't need to exist, only to be never brought up again after that. I'm, of course, talking about the Guardian Forces, or GFs, and their weird side effect of causing amnesia to those who equip and use them. Sounds dumb, right? The only purpose this is used for was to give the players a shock reveal that the party members you've collected along the way, minus Renoa, all grew up together at the same orphanage. Right, so why did this need to happen? Some say it's for the main characters to forget that they might have to kill Adia, who was also the headmistress at the orphanage that they grew up at. Or perhaps it was purely for character growth and to add to the minor themes of time and memory, but it just seemed so lazy and out of the blue. The real kicker was that it didn't really serve a higher purpose. All it did was delay the game from really getting into what it wanted to tell you. Number two good, the truth, near Gestalt. Devola! Popola! Oh look, you made it. We've been waiting for so long. What the hell is going on? It began 1300 years ago. Humanity, finding itself on the brink of extinction, undertook a last ditch rescue plan called Project Gestalt. Guess. Games often make you the hero, the one saving the world, preventing a greater evil from manipulating things in the background, and yet Nier Gestalt makes you the antagonist. Throughout the game, Nier, the father of Yona, is seeking a cure for her disease known as the Black Scrawl. He goes to great lengths to help her, killing monsters known as Shades, running across the limited world space. Hell, he spends years searching for her when she's kidnapped by the Shadow Lord the antagonist of the game. In reality, Nier and his allies have actually doomed the world with their selfish actions. The Shadow Lord and the Shades you've been fighting all this time were actually the original humans of the world. Nier and all of the people he's interacted with are actually replicants, vessels for the original humans to return to once the disease ravaging the world had subsided. Unfortunately, they didn't plan of having the replicants form their own consciousness, rendering the entire plan pretty much useless. In the end, you kill the Shadow Lord, the one who holds the only chance of unifying humanity with their shells, which leads to the destruction of humankind, later confirmed in the sequel Near Automata. Oh, and this info dump all happens at the end. The twist isn't exactly obvious either, only giving the player more knowledge about the fact after completing sequence B, which shows you the shade side of the story as you're progressing through the game. You have your own motives, your own desires. And we have ours. I fear it really is just that simple. Don't speak such foolish mess. Here are some of the honorable or dishonorable mentions that didn't quite make the cut. Some were outmatched by a stranger plot in the same series, or I've mentioned them before in another list, so maybe check those out too. Also, I won't be blurring these, so just skip to the time on the screen here if you want to avoid all of these.
that was the end of the battle of good and evil? Yes. Lord Grannis died long, long ago. Valma was victorious in battle. We'll be arriving shortly, Mr. President. Hmm. What in the world? <sighs> Number one bad, 4D, Star Ocean till the end of time. If you all feel that way, it must be. That means the Creator lies somewhere beyond this gate. Say... Can we even exist in 4D space? Yeah, it's a comp Similar to the plot twist trope of it was all a dream. Star Ocean 3 gives us a plot twist that renders everything before it null and void. The tense moments fighting a crazy war, it was all a simulation. The heartfelt moments between certain characters, the sacrifice that characters had to make, all pre-programmed apparently. At one point in the game, a good number of hours in, you emerge through a gate ready to fight the evil threat only to find yourself in a fairly calm, futuristic city with a bunch of confused onlookers. It's later explained that your party emerged from basically an MMORPG called the Eternal Sphere. You're not real. Everything you encountered and endured in the simulation are just data in the eyes of these fourth dimensional beings that created the whole damn thing. Do you know how soul-sucking that is? If they were trying to pull the whole, oh my god, it reflects reality, it's like the player playing a game controlling the lives of characters, then it failed spectacularly. It was lazy and robbed the player of any sense of achievement or attachment to the game. Not only that, but all of the Star Ocean games take place in the same universe, with Star Ocean 3 being placed all the way at the very end of the timeline. So technically, that makes the entire series a simulation. Way to break a franchise with a Dumb plot twist. Well, at least this looks like a town to me. I wonder if it's some kind of a trick. This is definitely 4D space. No mistake there. Indeed. What the hell's going on here? Number one good, secret plot, Baton Kaitos, Eternal Wings, and the Lost Ocean. That spirit seems to like you. If you can bond with it, something wonderful may happen to you. Are you ready? A good plot twist can leave the player in the dark, and no game does this better than Baton Kaitos, Eternal Wings, and the Lost Ocean. You, the player, are included somewhat in the game in the form of a spirit guardian, who talks to the main character, Callus, and makes decisions much like how you would do as a player. Due to some deep plotting, you eventually come to realize that Callus had planned to betray you and the entire party from the very beginning of the game. Hell, he even has his own boss battle. He's that serious on pushing his plans for revenge. It turns out that right at the very start of the game, when you meet Callus, he was being aided by an obvious evil woman, Melodia. They caused you, the player slash spirit guardian, to lose your memory with Callus pretending to suffer from the same amnesia as you. Throughout the game, he secretly aided the antagonists in their plot to revive Malpercio, the evil god. This all comes to a climax when Callus reveals his nefarious role in the plot, favoring the power that Malpercio could give him to avenge his dead father and brother and grant him the wings he so wanted. It's insane, an absolute mindfuck, and it's executed so well. It all makes sense when you reflect back on things, leaving you shaking your head and feeling absolutely played. What a wild ride. Look at me! 